Hello everybody, about a week ago I got a question asking basically how do I set up my virtual machines for malware testing and of course that video would only take about two or three minutes to make and be very brief so eh, didn't really think about doing that but for a while I've been thinking about making a virtual machine video because you know the topic's pretty simple for a lot of people but this channel has a lot of subscribers and not all of them mess with virtual machines and all that crap so Today I'm going to walk through the basic process of how I personally set up virtual machines. You know, my answer isn't always the correct one. There's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. So, let's get started. First, you will have to decide what virtual machine software you want to use. And in this day and age, there's basically two choices. You've got uh, Sun Oracle VirtualBox, which is free, free as in freedom. And you have VMware Workstation. And I suppose you can include VMware Player in that as well. However, uh, the old version of VMware Player didn't let you make virtual machines themselves. You had to download machines that were pre-made. And I think the new one lets you make them, but I just don't mess with it because you can get VMware Workstation very, very easily. So, of course, we're going to be using VMware Workstation. I'm very used to using it, very familiar with it. It has a lot of nice features. I just like it a lot. So... You can just go into Google, type in VMware Workstation, and of course you got the VMware website, and which is kind of a pain in the ass to download from these guys because they make you make an account and all this stuff, and if you were to actually buy it, it would cost, I think, like $300, or $249, or no, $301 for a basic one-year plan for VMware Workstation 12. Not interested in that, of course, and... Thankfully, finding keys for VMware is very, very easy. And normally, you would just download VMware Workstation from wherever. I like to download it from Softpedia because it gives you a direct link. You don't have to log in. It's really nice. So you just type in Softpedia. And there you go. VMware Workstation Pro. It's got the latest version. Now, the thing is, I don't like VMware Workstation 12. Had a lot of bugs with it. Had a lot of issues where I would have, say, a video open in Firefox on the host. And then the virtual machine would just lock up the entire computer. Not fun. Haven't had that problem with VMware 11. So we'll just go ahead and use that. And you can put in VMware Workstation 11. And I actually downloaded it from Softonic, which is like supposedly like not that great of a, I guess, um shareware website but it works and it's not some kind of weird installer so go ahead and walk through the process of that this is the file i actually downloaded from soft tonic we'll install it accept the terms we'll do custom install why not and for some reason this used to say oh wait well sometimes this will say that the port's already being used you can change it to whatever uh, check for product updates, leave that on. I don't help improve VMware Workstation, and that's all fine. Finish, and then after that, normally it would ask you to enter a product key. Now, of course, you could pay for VMware Workstation for whatever reason, or you could do a very easy Google search or YouTube search. I find most of my keys on YouTube, actually. You search for VMware Workstation 11, 12, 10, whatever key, and videos will have the key in the description very easy copy paste and it will be a i think it's like a volume license key so it'll just work forever which is great so anyway we'll open up vmware workstation and of course this is already activated as it will say here in a moment yeah licensed volume no expiration awesome okay so uh the first thing that'll happen if you leave everything checked is that it will ask you to do a uh, an update here. We'll go ahead and download and install that update since it'll update the VMware tools and all that good stuff. Now it's kind of inefficient because it will actually um, uninstall itself and then reinstall with this new version so kind of annoying but once you get it out of the way it's not so bad. As you can see it'll ask you to close the apps. So it'll just do that. Uninstall the old version. Now it will reinstall the new version. 
So you basically go through the install process again. It's all fine. So now the install is complete. We'll click finish and reopen VMware Workstation. Now at this point you have to make a decision. What operating system do you want to use? Now I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Um, uh, if you're watching this and you're confused what exactly the software is, think of it like an emulator. You're essentially emulating a PC in your PC. So you can have like an instance of Windows running that's completely independent of your normal operation. You know, I think that's about as simple of terminology as I can get with this. Basically, a computer in a computer. So, um, anyway, operating system. You have a choice to make. Uh, do you want to use, of course, Windows or Linux or OS X or something crazy? Who knows? But, of course, we're asking about for malware testing and videos, so, of course, it's going to be Windows. Now, the question is, what version of Windows do you want to use? Now, currently, the supported operating systems are, I believe, Vista is still supported by Microsoft in terms of updates. Of course, you can run whatever you want, XP, 2000, you know, it's not going to be very modern, but it will work. So you have, essentially, XP, Vista 7, 8, 8.1, and 10. Now, personally, I am going to be using Windows 7. And that's simply because I am very happy with how Windows 7 works. It doesn't use very much memory. Um, 8.1 is also a valid option. It's more modern. It's got the start screen and all that stuff. New, you know, all the new updates that came with 8 and 8.1. It's not so bad. 10, I am very reluctant to use in videos and certainly on my actual computer because you can't control the updates. Uh, the updates will install automatically. Over time, the updates will, if, even if you turn off updates, they'll eventually kick back on. And it's just not that great. And of course you say, oh, but you can use Enterprise or LTSB. No, uh, it, it's just not that great. I don't, I really don't like it. So I'm going to be using 7. So uh, creating a virtual machine. We'll go ahead and do that now. I just do custom because why not? We'll show all the features. Uh, workstation 11, that's good enough for me. I always choose install operating system later. If you choose to use from an installer disk, it will do this easy install thing, which will basically let you put in the product key and your uh, OOBE information, and it will just make the install automated. I don't know. I like the manual install. So Windows, we're using 64-bit uh, Windows. Not that it really matters what you put in there. Okay, that's the location. We'll use uh, regular BIOS. And now it's time for your hardware choice. Rule of thumb for me, at least because I'm only using one virtual machine at a time, you may use more at a time, I just don't. Um, I do half, basically half of what your system has. So I'm using a 2500K processor, which is a quad core, and I have 16 gigs of RAM. So we'll be using two cores in the virtual machine, and we'll be using eight gigs of uh, memory. Okay, so now we're at the networking phase, and this is where the whole malware testing thing comes in, because you have a few choices. You can use bridged networking, which is essentially connecting your virtual machine to your physical network directly. It will appear as a normal computer. You can do all the nice things with it over network. It connects to everything. Then you have network address translation, which will be sort of a hybrid between creating its own network and connecting it to your physical network. I believe it's still connectable over the network, don't quote me on that. Then there's also host-only networking where it will create its own virtual network on the host and you won't be able to connect out to uh, things on your network. Personally, I've always, I've always used NAT. I've never had a problem with malware or anything trying to jump computer to computer. Um, most of the time that can come from having a network share that's completely open, meaning no authentication. As far as I know, malware isn't able to break into a, uh, like a shared drive or a shared directory or something like that if it's protected somehow with an account. So for simplicity and just, you know, convenience, I use NAT. I don't think it's a big deal. If you think it's a big deal, just choose don't use a network connection or host only. Um, let's see. 
IO controller, just use this, it's fine. You can choose to emulate either an IDE drive, a SCSI drive, or SATA. I just use SCSI because it's simple. Virtual disk, uh, you know, how big do you want your Windows install to be? 60 gigs is, you know, plenty. Depends on what you do with a virtual machine. Um, I've used virtual machines a couple of times to do, like, big bulk downloads from, uh, uh, file locker sites, maybe like JDownload or something like that. Run that in there. It's nice to have it big, but you don't really need it. So we'll just go ahead with 60 gigs. That's fine. And, you know, your final tally of what you set up. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and mount our ISO image. Now I'm using, of course, Windows 7 Professional. And, of course, you'll have to find a copy of whatever operating system you want to use. It's not just going to um, give you what you want just for free. you got to go find it. So we're starting up Windows now. And as you can see, the setup is exactly like how the setup would be on a physical computer, except it's in this nice little uh, box here that you can do other stuff in the background of. Okay, so now we're at the uh, setup process for the account. I'll just go ahead and pick random name. I do no password. We'll set up the activation later. Um, ask me later for updates. We're not going to be installing updates. Uh, set your time zone. I always do a work network just because it doesn't ask you any other questions if you just set it up as a work network. Basically the same as home. Okay, so now we're at the desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and do a few modifications to this Windows install for my convenience and just for uh, better videos, I think. So first thing is disable UAC. That's what I always do. Every Windows install I have, just turn it off. Not going to use it. Next, we're going to go ahead and disable uh, Windows Defender. So Windows Defender, Tools it will allow us to click tools. Oh, I guess the service is not running. Okay, well, we got to start the service so we can turn off the service. All right, there we go. Cool. Options. Administrator. Do not use this program. Close. It's gone. Next, we'll go ahead and go into Explorer and change the layout a bit. First of all, we'll do... I like the menu bar. I always have that. Folder options. Show hidden files and uncheck these three. So now we can see all of the file extensions and stuff. It will show desktop.ini's, but it doesn't bother me too much. So now we have it essentially set up how I want it. Uh, we have updates disabled, we have UAC off, have Windows Defender off. Now we'll go ahead and install something called VMware Tools. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially extensions for the virtual machine so that it runs better. We have things like you can do copy-paste from... Uh, machine to machine. You can do drag and drop files. You can do, uh, I think the biggest one, of course, is the dynamic resolution. So you can maximize this and it will fit exactly into the black area here. Um, just a general um, performance improvements. You know, it's worth it to have uh, VMware tools installed. And actually, next thing we'll do is disable autoplay. Turn that off, because we don't need that. So now, oh, I guess it's going to autoplay anyway. Okay, cool. I suppose next time it won't do autoplay. Also, installing VMware tools will allow you to use the arrow function in Windows, which is nice. It looks nice. You'll see in a moment. It will, of course, ask you to reboot. Oh. 
Okay, so as you can see, it's a slightly higher resolution now. And if we just maximize this, it should auto fill this box if we enable auto fit guest. So there you go. It's nice and auto filled now. So videos are very easy to make with this. Switch the arrow theme to Windows 7 so that we get the nice uh, transparency options. And now is the point where we decide how we want to get the malware onto this computer. Now, of course, we did install VMware tools. Um, this is mostly for convenience. Um, a lot of malware will not run if it detects that it is in a virtual machine. And it, the malware has many different ways to detect if it is. Uh, it can detect what kind of hardware is in device manager. It can detect, you know, some different stuff. Probably the most simple one is to detect if VMware tools is actually installed on the operating system. So, you know, if it's able to detect that it's in a VM, it's not going to run anyway, which at that point I would use a physical computer to test that. However, if it's not going to care, then you, you definitely want VMware tools because it makes everything so much nicer. So at this point, you have to decide how you want to get it on there. And of course, a lot of ways to skin a cat. Uh, the first way is to use the shared folders. Now, big warning about shared folders. Oh my God, you're going to infect your host. It's going to find it and blow it up can set it up as read-only, which is very nice. So let me show you that. Go into settings, you go to options, shared folders, always enabled. And I like to do map as a network drive. And then you just add a folder. You have a nice wizard here. We'll just go to desktop, get a folder to share. Well, we'll share this one, why not? The one with Windows in it. Okay. And enable to share, and you can choose to make it read-only. This is a big thing here, of course. Finish, then okay. And then, as you will see, we have a shared folder on a network location. And ta-da, there it is. Awesome. Great. There is another way to do this. It's kind of primitive, and it's mostly if you don't have VMware tools or you're paranoid or something's wrong with you, whatever. You can actually make an, a disk image of the folder that you want to share and then mount that into the virtual machine. It's very tricky. Check this out. So I... I like image burn, IMG burn, it's a nice tool. So we'll just go ahead and open it up. And we'll go ahead and do essentially the same thing. We'll mount it into this virtual machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an image file from files and folders. And you can go in, you can select a folder, and then we'll go to just desktop and we'll select that same folder. We'll select it, select the destination. We'll just throw it on the desktop. And we'll actually throw it into this folder. Now, of course, it won't, you know, do some kind of weird dividing by zero thing. It will just work. So we'll go ahead and just click this nice build button here. Yes, I want you to add the contents. Yes, use the volume label. Go. So it'll make the nice disk image for us. Cool. All right. So now we have a disk image. And we can go into removable devices. Settings and connect. X64.iso. We'll connect it. And as you can see, we have it in here as a DVD. And there's our files. And of course, this is not writable at all because it's a, uh, you know, disk image. Not going to be changing that around. And that really is about it for how I set up these virtual machines for videos. Uh, try to keep it as simple as possible. A lot of times I'm uninstalling for whatever reason, or reinstalling, or something's going on. So, you know, I don't like to have a very permanent setup. Uh, you can include analysis tools like, uh, I suppose, Wireshark or uh, Fiddler 2. It's like a simpler version. Um, you can install antiviruses in here if you wanted to. You can put debuggers in here, whatever you want. And... Once you have it all set up the way you want, I should have done this before mounting, you can go into VM and, let's see. Oh no, you don't go into that one. You go to these buttons up here. You can make a, or make an image of your virtual machine so that when it inevitably gets messed up with malware, you don't have to reinstall all the time. So you just go in here, make a new snapshot, call it whatever you want and take a snapshot. And then you'll be able to restore that whenever you want.
Now, final step, before you would do that, you would want to activate Windows. Because if you're planning on using this virtual machine for more than 30 days, eventually it's going to lock you out and say that you got to register or activate or something like that. Now, for videos, I've gotten to the point where I will just use a real key. I'm fortunate enough to have access to an MSDN account so I can get the you know, keys for whatever I want. However, before, you know, I wouldn't have that access. So, DAS Loader, it's, it just works, man. It's a great tool. Uh, it does, I believe it modifies the, uh, the bootload, not the bootloader, but modifies the MBR. So, if you ever wipe the MBR, you're going to have to reactivate because that's where DAS Loader lives. But it works very well, and so I would just activate it like that. And then you're pretty much all set. Uh, like I said, not a very difficult process. Involves a lot of piracy, but, you know, what in life doesn't involve a lot of piracy? So, thank you all very much for watching. I hope it's helped some people. I'm sure it has. Uh, like I said, not everybody is going to be, you know, screwing with virtual machines for years and years. Some people are new to this, so it's nice to help out a little. So, thanks for watching.